All right, we are back with another show, and guess what? Lou is editing this one, so if there's any editing mistakes, if it looks rubbish, it's all his fault. Make sure if you've not done already, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live. If our videos, live streams are back, we've got the Win Your Dream Bike draw live on this channel now, so make sure you're hitting that notification bell so you know when we drop a video. If you wanna watch the video, watch it, and if you don't, save it for later. Shall we get into the news? Let's get into the news. Chris Pritchard cycling news show on YouTube. Terms and conditions apply. Don't sue me. This is purely entertainment, not factually correct. First up, this new story. Uh, it was actually Louis that sent this to me over on uh, over on LinkedIn from Strava LinkedIn. It's a story from Cycling Tips. Seven countries, seven thousand two hundred and thirty-seven kilometers. A dog as a passenger and the biggest bicycle ever. A couple have gone on a long ass journey around Europe to produce this. But, uh, I don't know if it's genius or it's just a waste of time. I don't know. Um, me and Louis have discussed on numerous occasions creating some, some Strava art, but it always ends with the same thing. How do we create a flaccid penis on Strava? If anybody knows a good route that we can take to do that, then let us know and we'll go and, uh, and, and do it. We want all the, the details. So the like inroads where we'll go inside, you know. Anyway, if you know that, then let us know. But um, yeah, leave your comments down below as we get into the racing news because that's pretty much all that's happened over the past, past couple of days. So First up, let's talk Tour of Britain. It started yesterday and it started in Aberdeen where it finished last year. And they went up a mountain, well, I say a mountain, there's no such thing as a mountain really in the UK, is there? But they had a hilltop finish and it was a brutal one. And it wasn't the favourites that ended up winning it. It was Israel Premier Tech. Corbin Strong took the victory ahead of Omar Fraili, ahead of Norway's Anders Halland Johannesson. Uh, Tom Pidcock for Inos Grenadiers uh, down in fifth. Stage two is going off as we speak. It's actually live on ITV4, I think. So make sure you go and tune in and watch it and I'll bring you all the latest news from it on Wednesday. Next up in the news, let's talk La Vuelta because over the weekend it was, well, if we're going off the form we saw of the first couple of weeks, Remco Evenepoel should just be riding away from everyone. But we didn't see it. We saw the first chink in his armour. We saw the first crack in his porcelain exterior. Remco Evenepoel lost time over the weekend to all his rivals and especially Primoz Rodlich. Rodlich took a, a minute and a bit out of him. I think he, his lead is now down to 1 minute 49 heading into the final week. Rest day tomorrow. But over the weekend, we saw Richard Carapaz heading for victory. We saw uh, Primoz Rodlich putting time into Remco Evenepoel. But we saw a gutsy, mature performance from Remco Evenepoel. He pushed on. He didn't allow himself to try and chase Primoz Rodlich, put himself into the red and ultimately lose La Vuelta over that weekend. If he'd have pushed and if he'd have caught him, if he'd have tried to stay with him, he could have gone and lost 10, 15 minutes. He could have been out of contention, but he stayed strong. He stayed mature. He focused on his effort and ultimately he didn't lose a great deal of time, but it is nice in a way to see that red jersey just ever so slightly cracking which is going to make for an amazing final week at La Vuelta. And I know what you're thinking. La Vuelta has been going on for five weeks now. It hasn't, two. But it feels like five weeks. It feels like this tour has gone on and on and on and on and on. A bit like this new story. Story. A bit like this new story, actually. So we'll end it there. Primoz Rodlich hunting Remco even a pole down. Remco still in red. Is he going to be in red this time next week? Who knows? Leave your comments down below and let us know what you think. Is Enric Mas going to take them both from behind and get the victory? Who knows? So, the World Tour relegation battle uh, is just hotting up and hotting up and hotting up. So much so that a few teams have said to their riders, you ain't going to World Championships. There's no UCI World Tour points available uh, for riders to add to their team totals to try and get them out of that relegation battle. But the biggest issue is, and if you don't follow this, essentially 18 of the top teams will automatically renew their World Tour licenses or gain a World Tour license. So the likes of Arkea Samsic and um, what are they call now? Alpacin de Koinik, uh, they're safely in that top 15, I think, of teams. Arkea could potentially drop still, but 
um, Alpacin de Koenig, 8th place, 9th, ninth, 7th, ninth, something like that. They're safe. They're going to get a World Tour license, which means one of the big teams is going to lose their World Tour license. So you've got the likes of Lotto Sedan, Israel Premier Tech. You've got Intermarche Wanty Go Bear. You've got um, Team Bike Exchange Jayco and EF Education, Easy Post, all there or thereabouts in that battle for that relegation. Any one of those teams could lose their World Tour license next year and with it, potentially millions in sponsorship. So it's a massive deal to these teams that they keep their riders riding even the lowest of the low races in the middle of France just to try and get some victories, just to try and get some UCI points, put them on the board and hopefully save their asses from dropping down to pro Conti level. A lot of riders have said that this isn't fair, that they should postpone this because of obviously they've been racing during the pandemic. Some riders get COVID while they're riding, have to pull out an event like we saw, you know, new Pavel Sivakov recently from Ineos Grenadiers out of um, La Vuelta. We saw riders pulling out of the Tour de France and one one main rider, let's take Primoz Roglic for instance, or Remco Evenepoel, end up getting um, COVID between now and the end of the La Vuelta. That's a big chunk of points that they're going to be missing. Um, but I don't know. It's, I think it's a great idea, but because of the pandemic, because of COVID, is it unfair? I don't know. But everybody else is in the same boat. So everybody's known about this. Everybody's been through the pandemic together, racing together. So it's not like it's not on their minds. It's not come out of the blue anywhere. Uh, but as ever, I'll keep you posted on this relegation battle as it hots up, as we get towards the end of the season. It'll be interesting to see who does and who doesn't go. Movie star, for instance, uh, stopping Alejandro Valverde from uh, from going to World Championships. Would he win it? I don't know. Depends how juiced up he is. But the fact that movie star are potentially in that relegation battle means that they say, Oi, you're contracted to us, Alejandro. Do your job. You're not pissing off to Worlds around the other side of the world because once they come back from Worlds, jet lag, fatigue, anything could play a part and they could, uh, yeah, succumb to that uh, relegation. Leave your comments down below on anything and everything that we've spoke about today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live with our videos. We've got live streams coming. We've got Win Your Dream Bike draws coming. We've got new shows coming. We've got everything coming. I'm coming. In your face. I don't know if you can put that in, Louis. You've got it, though. Bye.